Welcome to Devotional on Wednesday, um, August 27th, I believe it is, no, 26th, August 26th. Yesterday we had our Bible study centering around just looking at the Gather magazine for the months of July and August, and I know I've shared a lot with you from, from that. And I thought today I'd share with you the, um, the closing, it's a long prayer that, well, not that long, but it's uh, Catherine Malothi has written that kind of covers a lot of the stuff that was in this. Um, I just know that it covers the way the conversations went yesterday. Like I said, I know I've covered a lot of the articles in here because they seem to hit where we're at. And so I thought it'd be appropriate for us to to hear the summary prayer that is is written by Catherine. It's entitled God of Grace. And then she starts, God of Grace. In Jesus' interaction with, this, with Zacchaeus, we see you at work. Zacchaeus was likely not a scoundrel to begin with, though as a tax collector, he certainly had to compromise over time to meet the requirements of his job. I wonder, what values did he challenge first? What stories did he tell himself so that he could live with his actions? What trade-offs did he make to avoid facing his less savory instincts and behaviors? How did the stress of his circumstances allow him to turn away from so much of what healthy so social fabric requires? And we know, I'm taking an aside here, we know that what makes us who we are there's so much that goes into it. So when went into Zacchaeus. She goes on, for many of us, these last months have tested our loyalties, our commitment to the common good, and our senses of who we are and what we are capable of. We have been deeply stressed by the effects of a pandemic that marches across the landscape and perhaps into our lungs. We are more accustomed to having some control, yet now we know that this virus can be waiting on any doorknob, any countertop, even in the air. When we are vulnerable, God, survival can become a singular goal. Have we observed ourselves clutching our own needs and neglecting the needs of others? Have we fixated on one problem and resisted entering into the complexity of the whole situation? Have we sought someone to blame so we can be angry and complain in order to drown out our fear and grief? I confess, dear God, that I have done so over the last months. I worried about running out of toilet paper. I was afraid my husband would bring the virus home from the hospital where he works. I was furious at people who defied social distancing directions. More personally, I was quick to blame others who added upset to my upset. I have been fragile, not trusting in your capacity to redeem even the hardest of circumstances. I am grieving those I have lost and most of all, I have been worried primarily about myself and those closest to me. I have found it hard to even think about those whose homes are not a refuge or who have no home. I have avoided imagining places where healthcare systems struggle to respond to everyday maladies, much less a novel virus that infects exponentially. I confess that I have climbed into a tree, hoping to be able to see over others and catch a glimpse of you, healer of our every ill. How many of us have felt ashamed of what emerged within us in these months, of how we turned away from you two great requests of us, to love you with our whole heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
but I also believe that like Zacchaeus, you see us up in the tree, trying hard to blend in, hoping no one will notice how we have slipped up, how vulnerable we are. You see us and you invite us to come down. Give us courage, gracious God, to see you as you see us, to look ourselves in the eye, to feel your feelings, to live our love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us. Teach us to forgive. Hold us as we grieve. Inspire us to respond in just love. And she does it in Jesus' name. Amen. Covers a lot of feelings we have and have been having, doesn't it? And I just encourage us to continue to turn to God for guidance, hope, and love put ourselves in God's hands to help us along the way. And with that, I want to add the prayer that I've been praying for our um, school systems. We know that they are, that there's a lot of anxiety going on out there, and so we let us again pray. Oh God, wisest of all teachers, we give you thanks for the gift of reason, the opportunity for education, Bless our schools and school districts in South Dakota. May they be places of safety and learning. As the coronavirus offers us the opportunity to discover new and safe ways to educate, we ask that you give us wisdom, patience, kindness, love, faith, and hope as we wrestle with the hard issues that present themselves in these challenging times. We pause to give thanks for our school administrators, school board, the um, teachers, the paraprofessionals, the support staff, and all connected to the district. We entrust these dedicated individuals and communities to your care, knowing you will provide us as you see it that we need. We lift up parents and students. Their hearts are very anxious. Care for them, shepherding God. Calm their fears, ease their burdens, and give them good courage. And we pray this through Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I'm going to use the benediction we've been using these Sundays. Dear friends, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love this day and always. Amen.